Alright boys, the first game in the semi-finals for the World Championship 2020 for the Vault, I mean for BFME 2, the Rise of the Witch King between Sauron against Ave Havi is all about to begin. Popa Smurf 10, thank you so much. Popa Smurf 0, thank you so much for the follow, appreciate that and welcome. Engmar against Mordor, it's gonna be on the map Sakura Forest 2 boys. And by the way, I will have birthday very soon, in about, in about an hour, I'm gonna become 30, so it's gonna be the first time I'm getting into a new age in the live stream. I'm actually quite excited about that. <laughs> At the top left side, we have the red model player Ave Havi from Turkey against the Canadian blue Engma player Sauron. At the bottom right side, this is the map Sakura Forest 2. We have two mills coming up for the Engma player and two slaughterhouses coming up for the model player. Pretty nice. Mr. Smog 4 0 like Barcelona against Bayern Munich. 8 2. All right. We shall see what's gonna happen. I mean, Imperialist has still a shot, by the way. Even though he lost the semifinals, it doesn't matter that much because remember, this is a double elimination tournament. So he is dropping down to the loser's bracket, but can still work his way up to the finals, to the grand finals. Two slaughterhouses into the orc pit, into the third slaughterhouse. They're actually talking a lot in the in the chat here. I'm not even focusing on that too much. Two mills, Hall of the Kingsman into the third mill. Powerpoint wise, Engma player didn't pick anything just yet, but I'm assuming he's gonna start with the Warchant, and Mordor player might start with the Eye of Sauron or the Warchant as well. Okay, the second Orc pit is coming up now, so early on we're gonna see Gundabad Warriors from Engma against the Orcs from Mordor. I mean, Gundabad Warriors, they should be able to win the 1v1 fight, but remember, in the version 8.4, the Orcs got buffed. Their damage output got buffed, to uh, up to 25%, so that's actually a lot. And also they cost now less command points. So you you know, they cost only 30 command points now. Even on low command points, you will be able now to spam a lot of orcs. And on top of that, they are also the cheapest units in the game. So three slaughterhouses, two orc bits, and the troll cage is coming up already for the Turkish player. On the other side, I see the second half of the Kingsman coming up after three males and one half of the Kingsman, obviously. Um, the first Thrall Master is moving forward. And I feel like Engma will struggle a lot to deal with the Trolls. They got nerfed big time. So they will cost more command points. Now they will need more experience to level up. And on top of that, also the regeneration, the find an orc to eat ability, has a huge cooldown now, 30 seconds. Okay, Gundabad warriors are moving forward. And, I mean, orcs are moving forward. Let's see how much damage they will be able to deal. But he has already two battalions of Thralmaster units here. So that should be enough to defend himself. In the meantime, um, if Sauron uses Warchant here, he might be able to take it down. And yes, he was able to take it down, boys. Uh, without, without even using the Warchant, even though Ave Habe was using the Eye of Sauron defensively. And that's actually a great victory here for Sauron, because now he has the buff advantage. And Eye of Sauron is gonna go on cooldown very soon. That means he can achieve something later on with a greater push of multiple Gundabad warriors. During all this time, he was also able to keep his meals alive, as he was using this Gundabad warrior here for defensive purposes. Even with the damage buff, the orcs can't still handle those Gundabad warriors in a 1v1 situation. Uh, Hit Machine, thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Alright, uh, the first mountain troll is already on the field. The troll master here is gonna turn into the Gundabad warrior. The second mountain troll is not being recruited just yet. That means the slaughterhouse in the backside is actually not protected at all. And might be taken down definitely if he's using the war chant. Uh, Engma player Sauron is creeping the war player at the right side of the river. We have orcs coming now against the spearmen, they should be able to do some great amount of damage. Um, and because he has so many orcs, and he's gonna use the warchan actually kinda defensively at the right side of the river. The slaughterhouse here has been protected, I think he was able to kill the Thrall Master. And the builder here from Ave Havi might be in trouble, he needs to pay attention. If he doesn't, he will be losing him quite fast. But it looks like he should be able to get away, because the orc arches are actually bursting down those Kundabad warriors quite fast. Okay, the troll was able to kill one of these males, but the pikeman, he's running into them. Oh, can he get away? The, oh, yes, he can actually get away. That's huge because he's almost dead. 
And now he needs to make sure to eat one of these orcs, but luckily for Ave Ave, he was also to, you know, able to get this creep under his control and get the experience, the power points, but also the treasure, which is very important. We have some units here at the backside. They are recovering over time, but Ave Ave was able to see them, and he should be also able to take them down. Okay, I mean, Warchant's advantage kinda was blown up for no reason for Sauron, and even though he was using the Warchant here kinda defensively in the middle of the map, um, he was not able to achieve anything. But he will be able now to take down this Lord Ahosia. They are not focusing now the Trollmaster, and the Troll is not gonna be in time. Was very, very close, though, he was almost able to save that. And these Orc Archers are doing a great job here defending against those, um, you know, Gundabad warriors, which are being sent forwards one by one. But he was able to take down the mill now, and the troll is moonwalking a little bit for style points, and he will now even keep focusing on the whole of the Kingsmen. And Namar Shield 12, thank you so much for the photo and welcome. He will be able to take it down, and this one is almost level 3. Does he have Snowbind? Nope, he doesn't have the Snowbind yet. He needs to cancel that, but a level 3 whole of the Kingsmen is going to be able to shoot. But what's the matter if it's already very low? And I think Ave Ave should try to take it down, but it might be too late now for this one troll, because the troll is getting attacked from the Hall of the Kingsmen now, but also from the fortress, and will be forced to retreat. And the first Dark Ranger Battalion is gonna be joining the battlefield pretty soon as well. We have 450 command points for Ingmar, almost 5 power points collected after the war chant. It was expanding quite nicely at the bottom left side as well. This mill here will be taken down next. On the other side, we have the same amount of command points available for the Turkish player, Ave Ave and his mortal faction. He has collected 7 power points after the Eye of Sauron, and is only 3 power points away from unlocking the Industry Power Spike. Ooh! Yes, he will be. Does he have power points now for the Snowbind? Yes, he does! Just barely getting the power points, and the troll here is gonna be taken down. Potentially, he refuses to die, but he loses both of them at the same time now. And here's already one of these Dark Ranger Battalions on the field, but I guess they got taken down the second they were joining the battlefield. The Snowbind's effect is gonna be gone soon, and I think this structure might be taken down right after, because he has no power points for the Felwind. He has Warchant ready now, but there is nothing to use it on. This um, troll has to make sure to eat one of these orcs to regenerate health, and he should be now able also to take down this Hall of the Kingsman level 3, which would be a huge lose for the Engma player Sauron, and I think that's gonna be the case regardless what he's trying to do. The Wolf Riders are doing a great job with the War Chance buff, but that's not going to be enough to save the whole of the Kingsman level 3, and that's going to cost him a lot of money, but also a lot of uh, time to upgrade this one to level 3, because this one is only level 1, so he needs to invest a lot of money, time, to get the second Dark Ranger Battalion on the field. Maybe it's not a great idea to upgrade the structure in the front, maybe you should upgrade the one in the backside, which is harder to take down for the model player. Because of that attack, Moto player was also able to collect on, you know, a lot of power points actually. He is going for the Haradrim Palace now. He has enough power points for the industry, which might be used on either this one or the one in the back. They are both level 2. Uh, he has 600 command points collected against only 525, but not only that. Also the fact that Engma player has barely any units on the field is kinda a big feels bad, man. And industry is gonna be very important and impactful in this situation. Moro is ahead anyway, and we know Moro is one of the hardest snowballing factions, and once you have the lead, the late game is gonna be yours anyway. With that many trolls and then potentially black riders later on, heroes. But also a mistake here from Ave Havi in my opinion, because you should be using that industry, I think, on the one in the backside. But maybe he didn't want to because the one is here you know already a little bit damaged. He wanted to use it on the one which is not being touched so far. The trolls are doing their thing. The builder from Sauron has to be careful. Will we take... No, he's paying attention in the last possible second. The wolf riders are getting chased from those two badasses. Those mountain trolls from Mordor. The builder will be able to get away, but the trolls might be able to finish him off, by the way. The whole of the Kingsman in the front, this time not even protected by anything, including the fortress. The transition into the level 1 was made before. But he needs to get some of these hill trolls potentially on the field to take down those trolls fast enough. Because he's far far away from getting anywhere close for the Dark Rangers. But the pikes, they are always gonna be a great choice against the trolls. So he needs to be careful with those trolls. He already lost two of them. And they are very expensive. They cost 500 each. 
Radrim Felix is only level 1, he's gonna go get those Easter links on the field. No transition being made into the Orchids level 2 for the Black Orcs. Um, soon Perfectus, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that and hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. He might be able now to take down this mill in the back, but I think it's risky. It's a risk he doesn't want to take. I take it. Oh, he doesn't want to take it indeed. <laughs> he was actually thinking about it for a second. Easterlings are here and more trolls, more orcs to kill this whole of the Kingsman. It's good. And he's going to leave the game. The first game will be won by the Turkish player Avi Havi, ladies and gentlemen. And everyone who was betting on Avi Havi, you're going to get your points. GG, very well played. And remember, Avi Havi was picking the random faction and he got Mordor, while Sauron was picking the pre picking the Engma faction in the first game on the map Sakura Forest 2. The second game, this time on the Pirates map, the Sorrow Isles. In a good against evil matchup, Engmar against the Alvin faction. Let's get it started. Avi was picking the random faction for the first game. He got Mordor, which he was able to win. Now he pre picks the Alvin faction instead and faces once again against the Engmar faction from Sauron. In the game number 2 in the semi-finals for the World Championship 2020 with a cash prize of $500. At the bottom side, we have the blue Engmar player Sauron from Canada against the red Elven player Ave Havi from Turkey. Gonna start with an early barracks actually, Malon 3 into the barracks. On the other side we see two mills. Because of the early barracks, he might go for the creep here in the back side. He might go for the creep here with those pikemen and the builder, but he might also go for the Lorian warriors and go for an early push, which is something we have seen from Imperialist in the quarterfinals against DJ Premier, and it was working quite well. On the other side, uh, the first, what was that actually? The first Hall of the Kingsman is coming up now. He's gonna save money for the third mill, which is gonna be built now. Really love your cast, man. Keep them coming. Hey, thank you so much for the nice words. Appreciate that. Trucky, welcome. Jimmy, welcome. The Great Predator, welcome, guys. Thank you for being here. Dominic, hi. You can send me the replays you want me to cast in Discord. Okay, two mills. Hall of the Kingsman into the third mill. And we have two um, now early barracks, obviously, into the second Malon tree. And the first unit is gonna be this Mifflon sentry unit from the barracks, from the Elven faction. And he might go, he will potentially gonna go for the creep now. Which is, you know, pretty much the only reason why you would ever start with an early barracks. Or you wanna go for an early attack, but that's not gonna be the case when you start with the pikemen. In this case, you would have started with the Lorian warriors. And since he's, he was already moving forward with the builder, the plan is simple. Ave Havi is gonna lure the troll away from the lair. He will be creeping them afterwards with the pikemen. Okay, it looks like the Trollmaster units, they are smelling something like this. They are moving to the, to the bottom right side. They might be able to snipe that. Let's see if this is going to be the case. The second Hall of the Kingsman is coming up at the same time. And yeah, Sauron is actually moving directly to the side. No, it's not being the case. And he was just not able to see, to see the Builder. He was just choosing this pathway here for an attack, but he's going to run straight into the Lorian Warriors. The Gundavad Warriors against Lorian Warriors, potentially, that's going to be the first fight of the game. But the creep at the bottom right side will be uncontested. Uh, he's going to get level 2 after that. He will be able to capture the signal fire. He's going to get power points and also the treasure, which is the most important part, especially early on. There is a mill from Sauron at the top left side. He was kind of forced to retreat with the Trial Master unit. And also being patient, not transforming them into anything. Maybe you need to face against the Lancers, but that's not being the case, at least for now. We have now archers for defensive purposes, and the first push is going to happen through the bottom right side. And Sauron does not see that coming. Rallying Call is available for the Elven player, and he will be using that definitely for this attack on those Lorien warriors and pikemen. But Engmar is also ready for a counterattack. He has three of these Gundabad warriors at the top side. One of them is being splitted from the group. It looks like you want to split them one in the middle, one in the top side, and two at the bottom side. And there is only one archer, two archers, I take it back. This one should be protected, but they need to avoid fighting them in the melee range. That's something you want to always avoid doing. This Malone tree is going to be taken down very fast. But the rallying call at the bottom side has been used also from the Alvin player, Ave Havi. And unlike the Alvin player, right now, the Engmar player doesn't have anything to defend himself. 
But the first Wolf Rider is gonna come from this Trial Master potentially. No, that's not gonna be the case. I think he's gonna do that with this one in the back. Take down those Lorien Warriors fast enough. And that's gonna be the, indeed the case. He's trying to reach the mill here in between the Hall of the Kingsmen, but it's easier said than done. The mill in the back, I mean the Malon tree in the backside has been protected. And the attack will be protected as well, because he is getting more and more archers now from double barracks. Okay. Um, he was able to get the pikemen in position. The wolf riders, they need to be careful. There are still some pikemen on the field. But Sauron takes the risk. They are buffed, so they're not gonna take too much damage from the trample. As the wolf riders are the weakest form of cavalry unit you are able to recruit in Rise of the Witch King. And Elven player has now archers and pikemen moving forward. It looks like you want to group them all together. And Wolf Riders, they need to still be careful. There are still some pikemen on the field. You don't want to underestimate their damage output. They have also Wolf Packs on the field. As we know, they are one of the greatest counters against the pikemen. But that's pretty much it. Against anything else, they are not a great choice. And against um, against Elven Archers, they're gonna die pretty quickly. Elven player was also able to expand at the bottom right side. He has built three Malon Trees already here. Uh, but Engma player might be able to scout this area now and take them down because they are not protected they're gonna die pretty much uncontested elven player is gonna try to take down this mill in the front which is the only mill remaining from the beginning of the game and the closest to hit level 2 350 command points for ingmar 550 command points for elves but that's gonna get lower and lower now as he was able to see two of these small on trees and potentially gonna be able also to, um, to see the third one Interesting is the fact that Elven player didn't even capture the signal fire here on the right side. But this mill is gonna be taken down, definitely. The archers! Ooh, nice trample, by the way. Pikemen were just not in position, and one more nice trample here from the second battalion of the Wolf Riders. Five power points collected. He might go for the heal here, just to get some sustain, and that's gonna be the case. He might also use the heal immediately. And what you wanna do in this situation, I think you wanna camp here right in front of the Hall of the Kingsmen. That means you can actually snipe down those units the second they are entering the battlefield. But Engma is not about to defense, he's gonna go for a counterattack now. Elven player doesn't have this time too many units to defend himself. And those Lorien archers, oh, never mind, he's paying attention! Oh, nice ass, by the way, just in time, he will still lose a couple of these wolf riders. Oh, okay. Oh, he lost the entire battalion here, unfortunately. The builder has to get away, he's quite slow, this Malon tree might be taking down the wolf packs are dying now to the archers as they were trying to take down the pikemen. Elven army is kind of splitting up here, but they should be able to defend themselves because there are no units remaining on the field anymore from the Engma player. And uh, he was almost able to save the Malon tree as well, that would be huge! Revolution is welcome to this stream. 510 command points for elves, heal, rallying call and 3 power points collected afterwards. On the other side, we have 5 power points collected after the War Chant, which might be invested for the Snowbind or for the Felwind. 300 command points only, though, and Ave Hawe, also in the game number 2, is slightly ahead. This Malon tree potentially gonna go down if the Trial Master can be protected, but he's in the front, so he might be in trouble, that's why he needs to reposition himself, which is gonna be done now. But Elven player is gonna go for the attack. Uh, Rallying Call is available, Heal is available for the next attack. And there is not much left from the Engma player, but again, taking down the Hall of the Kingsman is quite challenging, because this one, especially in the front side with level 2, has 4500 health. But once again, he's gonna cancel that, because he knows he can't protect it. The Hall of the Kingsman level 2 will be taken down first. And I think the second one is gonna go down right after Felwind is going to be used, but there is no follow-up. Rallying Call is incoming now for the buff. The Hall of the Kingsman is getting bursted down and the Felwind did absolutely nothing in the situation. And GG is coming once again, he's demolishing everything. But doesn't call it GG. He's gonna build Trollstone Thrower and even the Hall of the Kingsman here. Maybe he was sure that he couldn't protect them. So he needs to build now defensive expansions around the fortress. He's fighting until the end, but he has not much left on the field anymore. Only 100 units from the possible 350 command points. The commitment is incoming on the fortress. I don't know about that. But luckily he knows potentially, or he guesses, that Engma player doesn't have enough power points for the for the Snowbind, which can't be used on the fortress to save it. And slowly but surely the fortress is going down. But now the Trollstone Thrower is coming up on the field. 
and he might it might be enough to save the day let's see if this is going to be the case he has even his builder with the army by the way imagine you are building a well and a statue here but he's gonna go for a statue right in front of the slaughterhouse i mean <laughs> of the fortress engma player has not much left on the field anymore he was able to see the Malon tree here, which is almost level 2, by the way. The fortress slowly but surely is being taken down. 425 command points for Engma. Heal is incoming. Almost command points gap. 575 command points for the Elven player, Ave Ave, who is having a great performance. And by the way, yes, the things you have said about Sauron is true, but so is Ave Ave. Ave Ave is also not defeated so far in the World Championship. He was able to win every single series he was playing uh, until now. And this one is also looking great for the Turkish player. The only Turkish player left in the WCS uh, has now the 2-0 advantage in the best of 7 series in the semifinals. But we're gonna start now with the game number 3 on the map Forts of Eisen Engmar against Elves one more time. Both players are pre-picking the factions. Ave Ave sticks up to the Elven faction once again. And Sauron wants to prove that his Engma is worthy to face against the mighty Elven faction. Alright. On the left side, we have the blue Engma player Sauron from Canada against the red Elven player Avi Havi from Turkey. The first Malon tree into the second one, that's not gonna be our early barracks this time. On the other side, we will see again two males for the Engma player. Our point wise, uh, nothing has been chosen just yet, but I'm assuming we're gonna see Warchant from Engma and Rallying Cole from the Elven faction. Alright. Um, yeah, I mean, now the question is gonna be, I think it's gonna be a normal start from the Elven player, he's gonna go for the barracks potentially now. Or he might also start with the stable, that might be the case, but I feel like stable start against Engma is always tricky. Because Engma can always turn those Trailmaster units into, you know, pikemen quite easily. So I feel like pike, you know, rushing lancers against Engma might not be the best call in your entire life. But I don't know that much, to be honest. So it might work out because it might surprise your opponent because it's something we have not seen that many times so far. It's gonna be three Malon trees into the barracks. We have two mills into the barracks, into the third mill from the Engma player Sauron, who is 2-0 behind, by the way, in the best of seven series, and has to make sure to win this. Because he has two more chances, if he loses two more games, he's gonna drop down to the, to the loser bracket, and Avi Havi is gonna move to the finals, in which he will be facing against Mr. Smog, who was able to win against Imperialis earlier today, and also who is the world champion of 2019, by the way. The second hall of the Kingsman is coming up, for Engma, he still didn't pick anything just yet, and Rallying Cold has been chosen so far from the Elven player Ave Havi. Pikeman into the Lorian Warriors. I think he's gonna plan the same thing what he was doing in the previous game. You wanna creep with the Pikeman first, because they are leading right in, you know, to the creep at the right side of the river. And then he's gonna group with those Lorian Warriors afterwards and go for a Rallying Cold push, which might be once again be very effective. And he's this time also gonna build a very early second barracks against Engma. Who has one Gundavad warrior at the bottom right side. We have um, no transition just yet into the Troll and Wolf Den. For the Wolf Packs and Wolf Riders. He's creeping the Warg layer. And if he can protect this Malon tree here, it's again a great start. Because he will be able to creep, get some power points, experience and treasure. While being able to keep his slot, I mean this Malon tree alive. Uh, would be a nice start into the game number 3 from the Turkish player. But I think that's not going to be the case because archers are not there just yet. And it feels like the Malon tree is going to be taken down regardless. The Traumaster is protected. And level 2 now already. Engma is disengaging. They are fast. They should be able to get away against those Lorian warriors. And, uh, and you know, Engma doesn't really need a level 2 unit because the Traumaster... One of the advantages from the Trailmaster units from Engma faction is the fact that you can also recover over time and you are only level 1. And Elven player is creeping the second Borg layer, by the way, offensively at the left side of the river this time. So that kind of makes it even uh, losing this Malon tree because you're gonna get two creeps, a lot of power points, a level 3, almost level 3 pikemen here. And two creeps in total gonna give you also almost two power points in total, so he's also ahead. Warchan is being used actually kind of defensively around the left side of the river. 
Now he needs to definitely make sure to push him back and potentially take down one of these Malone trees once again. Engma player on the bright side is being untouched so far, so he didn't lose anything. He's gonna be able to keep spamming more and more units. His command points kept already. So he needs to make sure to expand. He has already money now for the for the mill. And when you have money for mill, just go for one more. At some point, it doesn't matter if you expand always to 97 person or 98. Doesn't matter. I think you want to just make sure to have enough cap command points so you can keep spamming units all the time. Malon tree here will be taken down first. Extrovers are doing a great job, but it feels like... They are, yeah, I think that's the right call. He was, you, you know, he was able to take down the Malone tree. He was forcing his opponent to use rallying call defensively. And disengaging now, I think that's the right call. This Gundabad Warriors, they shouldn't be able to take down this Malone tree here. Because there are so many archers on the fields now. One, one of them is even buffed. Um, and if you can put them at the corner here. Again, they are level 1, but it doesn't matter. They're going to recover over time slowly but surely. You might use them later on. If the Alvin player is not able to see that, obviously. I think he was able to see that. Maybe he forgets about that. And then he has to deal with the entire battalion once again. As Sauron is hiding them quite nicely at the bottom right side. Alvin player is gonna creep one more work layer. That's gonna be the third work layer for the Turkish player Avi Havi. Against zero so far. Engma wasn't able to creep. But Engma is being able to build a tower. To block this pathway entirely. And Elvin faction in general is kind of struggling a lot when, when when it comes to deal with early towers. Even though the towers are nerfed now, all of the towers, by the way, in Rise of the Witch King now will have only 1500 health. So they are kind of easier to take down. But I think that doesn't count for the Elvin faction because the Elvin player mainly focuses the army on top of the archers. Like 80% of the army's size is based on archers and the other 20% is being used to protect the archers <laughs> so they are not being made to actually take down the structures that's why we always will see in the late game stages ants on the field without ants it's gonna be very difficult for elves to finish okay uh, this look is this is looking good for sauron but elven players moving through the mid side because of the tower sauron can now make sure to expand very nicely around the top right side and he was already doing that he has three mills now and it's gonna be hard for Elvin player to enter this pathway or this area of the map from this pathway. Engma has also a lot of units on the field. Elvin units are getting stealthed around the trees. You can't even see them on the minimap as you can see. They are here, but you can't see them on the minimap. One pikeman was able to sneak through and he might be able to take down this mill and Sauron will be demolishing that immediately. He doesn't want to give more power points to his opponent who is already slightly ahead. He on the other side will be potentially able to take down at least one of these Malon trees. Maybe not. He's gonna be able to put it very low, but it should be protected. We have also Lancers on the fields now. The Gundabad warriors are gonna get trampled down. Not a big deal. But both Malon trees are quite low, especially this one. He might be able to finish that later on. Warchan was used, uh, but it looks like Avi Havi will be able to disengage. If he just waits now, he will have the buff advantage and he has enough power points for the heal, but he might also save more uh, for the end shrouding mist, which is a great choice definitely in those skirmishes. I mean, he was not even able to see the tower just yet, and those three mills are untouched. We have also the work layer at the top left side still remaining on the field, as well as the troll layers at the top right side, but also at the bottom left side. Okay, he's gonna build a wall up here with the builder to get away. These two mills might be taken down from those lancers. We have two barracks and one stable. He has built even a statue in between the barracks for defensive purposes, just in case something goes wrong. Galvin is incoming, and we have dark range already on the field, but level 1 only from the Hall of the Kingsman level 3. He might also purchase the Benakiri upgrade later on. I feel like Benakiri upgrade is a must purchase from Engma faction once you have your... Uh, dark ranges on the field, especially if you're ever gonna make the, uh, the transition into the snow trolls from the uh, troll and wolf den. Because they are also getting a lot of benefits from the level 2, just like dark ranges with the long shot. Long shot felvin combination, super easy to pull off, but super impactful against uh, infantry units, like in this case the Alvin army. Now the buff advantage is definitely on the side from the Alvin player. He's pushing him back, but remember. There are so many mills around the top right side, so his resource income is still not looking bad. He has still collected 600 command points. 
Alvin player because he was able to expand it the bottom side, has 770 command points and he's almost command points capped already. But look at the army yourself. This army is just not being made. Beside the Lancers, it's gonna take the Alvin player ages to destroy this whole of the Kingsman level 3. By the way, very tanky, 6000 health, almost as tanky as a fortress with 7500 health. They are getting more ranges on the field, the buff is gone now. It might be a wrong decision from Ave Habi to keep fighting here. The lances are coming, the longshot is incoming, he's not paying attention and he's gonna lose all the archers here. The lancers are suiciding for no reason. And even though it was looking so good for Ave Habi, he will just give up so many, so many you know, units and power points for free. And give him a great chance to come back to the game. This mill in the backside should be protected by those Gundabad warriors. And now the Engma player can actually push him back. Especially the long shot should never be able to land on top of the archers because there was no Felvent combination. You see the animation coming, you have time to dodge that. But I think he was just not watching and not being careful. But it's not a big deal because we have now the transition into the Alvin Barracks level 2 for the Mirkwood archers, the strongest archers in the game. However, he doesn't have leadership just yet. I mean, maybe Haldir would be a great choice, try to get him level 5, because if the Engma player gets multiple of these Dark Rangers on the field, uh, regardless how strong your archers are, they are always glass cannons, they are very squishy in terms of defensive abilities, and they're gonna be taken down very quickly and very fast. 8 power points collected after Foresight and Rallying Call, 7 760 command points, but that's gonna be now less because those Malon trees are not protected at all. And actually, Alvin player was indeed able to take down this tower, but also all the mills around the top side from the Engma player Sauron. But this is gonna be the same fact also at the bottom side, bottom right side. All these Malon trees are gonna be gone, and they're gonna be almost at the same amount of command points afterwards. And the time should be in favor of the Engma player, in my opinion, because he's gonna eventually get like five, six, seven battalions of Dark Rangers on the field. Eagle summon against Engma are not gonna be that effective because the Eagle's gonna die very quickly against this many Dark Rangers. And then the Felvin. Oh, the Riders are diving in! I don't know about that. He's gonna give him so many power points. Look at his power points now. But also in the lead game. Like Engma can use Frozen Land for the slow, for the leadership part. Now the Dark Rangers will have leadership as well. And then he can use uh, Frozen Land, you know, the long shot. Because Frozen Land is gonna slow them down your long shots will have easier time to land. Frozen land uh, and then Blight, Felvin and Blight. So Engma, in my opinion, with 15 power points and Blight, he might be able to change the outcome of the game because I feel like Blight is the best army killer because not only you kill enemy army with that very easily, by the way, but also you turn them into the Vites and those Vites are gonna fight for you. And Engma is getting more and more power points because those Lancers, they are giving so many power points to the Engma player. There's a tower here with Dark Rangers inside of that, look at that. They are devastating the Lancers in a second and a half, they are forced to retreat immediately. Half a battalion is gone in two seconds. Engma was also able to push him back around the top side. We have 750 command points now for Engma. 635 for Ave Havi, the Alvin player. This score after the game number two might be even by the way, it can still go either way. But we see an end mood coming up now for the uh, for the Alvin player. Remember the ends got nerfed as well. So the Dark Rangers with the eye shot, if they're gonna go for it, will deal much more damage than in the version 8.3. Because in the version 8.3 they didn't deal any damage. <laughs> He's also gonna go for the Trollstone Throwers and the Troll and Wolf Ten for the um, you know for the Wolf Riders, Wolf Packs, or potentially Hill Trolls and Snow Trolls later on from the level two. He was able to creep the troll layer at the top right side. The one at the bottom left side is still remaining on the field. We have four power points after Frozen Land, Bellwind, Warchant, and 750 command points against 635 command points, six power points after Heal, Rallying Cold, and Foresight. The so Elven player has collected all the five power points from the spellbook, but he still needs four more power points for the Mist, for the Elven Wood potentially. Um, and that means Engma is ahead, definitely, in terms of power points, because of the frozen land. Okay, now we have a lot of Lancers on the field from Ave Havi. They're gonna try to take down as many structures as, as they can. Taking down the one in the backside, which is already low. And Sauron is gonna just demolish that. He's gonna go for a counter-attack. 
Uh, did he purchase the banner carry upgrade? Let me check. No, yes, he did, but he didn't purchase that on the Rangers just yet. They are level 1, as you can see yourself. The Mirik Woods are dying quite fast. I mean, they are very powerful, but in this situation, you want to make sure that you have enough of them on the field. Okay, we have a statue on the backside for the leadership part. He's splitting his army, knowing that Felvent long shot, long shot combination might come. Long shot is coming in indeed. He was not using the Felvin for that. So he was not able to hit anything. But he needs to be careful. He's actually donating so many power points in return. And the Midfoods are hitting like an absolute truck. Oh, nice. The sport is incoming now. Sandwich time, boys. You know, and they're gonna take down the entire army from the Engmar player. What a what a big throw from both the sides, actually. Like, Avi ah, was throwing around this side. Now Sauron is throwing big time in the middle of the map. Like, game of trolls potentially here. He has 750 command points, but not doesn't have that many units on the field anymore. Now the Mirk boots are coming, and the Alvin player was also able to get so many power points collected during this fight. He has Rallying Call available, Heal available, and the Mist available as well. Alright. So Ave Ave has now the advantage, definitely. He will have also Ents soon joining the battlefield. But there is already one of them. But he's far, far away. He needs to walk all the way up to the side to siege. He should be still able to take down some of these Malon trees. The throw stone thrower is doing a great job against those elven archers, taking them down slowly but surely. This mill is gonna be actually protected. Missed, but that's a perfect situation. Look at this. But the snow trolls are diving in. There, there are still some pikemen. They're gonna they don't care. They're gonna get into the army, but they are getting slowed down. And the Mirik Woods are very strong, by the way. They're gonna Take down even the snow trolls quite fast, but now actually Elvin player is throwing again. Like, what is that all about? Why would you stay there? You know, the end is coming finally. I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen during the next fight. Um, we have Trollstone Trover, one of them. He's going for the second now against one end only, and the end is gonna receive more damage from the Trollstone Throwers now in the current patch. He's also gonna get more rangers on the field. Longshot is still available. Felvin, Frozen Land, and also Warchan is available. Frozen Land is gonna be a win-win situation definitely for Engna. Not only you will be able to make sure to slow down the enemy units, but also gonna give you leadership, which means more damage output for the Dark Rangers and all the other units. Lances are committing. They are trying to take down this Trollstone Thrower, but that's a mistake. They are forced to retreat now. We have level 2 Snow Troll with Charge Attack being available. The Vel is going to be taken down first. And that might be a terrible situation for Ave Ave here. Because Felvin and Longshot can devastate the entire army. Aldir is only level 4. Longshot is incoming. No, it's not incoming. He was not using the Longshot. He was only using the Felvins here. Longshot was not available, I guess, from this one. But this one had it available. And this one had it available as well. Miss is gonna be used now. We are, we are getting more reinforcements. The Lancers are looking to get into the backline and they will be able to do that. Nice trample here, by the way. Frozen Land is gonna be used to slow them down. And for the leadership part, the Archers are still remaining on the field and Haldir is level 5 now. Warchan is gonna be used for the double buff action on the Dark Rangers, but there are not many left on, on the field anymore. And Engma player, I don't know what that was. I think Sauron had the chance to land multiple long shots there on top of the Mirk Woods, but he was not using the ability for some reason. And Elven player was able to hold himself and take down the Trollstone Thrower. Nope, that's not being the case. The Trollstone Throwers are still remaining on the field. And he also luckily was able to save two battalions of those Dark Rangers. Since they are above level 2, they will be respawning over time. Engma has still 800. Oh, Blight is ready though. Blight is ready though, but he has nothing to stop the enemy units. And I feel like Blight in this situation would be an overkill. You should be trying to take down the units without using the Blight. On the other side, we have 10 power points collected. All of the Kingsmen and level 3 mil are being targeted from this end. He's able to hit both of them at the same time, as you can see. Okay. The Trollstone Throwers are doing a great job. The level 3 mil has been taken down. The level 1 mil. Blight is incoming. Longshot is incoming. The army of the Whites will be summoned. But that's what I'm talking about. The Blight was nearly not as useful as it normally would be. If you use it with combination of the Frozen Land and Felvent. Or Felvent. And actually, Alvin player will be able to save many of these units. They're gonna retreat now. And he's getting more and more Mirkwoods. He's gonna get more and more ants. 
They are getting one more. He's gonna have two now in total. The third one is also on his way for the siege. The tower here with the Dark Rangers inside is doing a great job protecting this pathway for now. He has also expanded around the top right side with three mills and one tower to protect them. The Trollstone Throwers, they might still be able to do something here against the Rangers, against the Mirkwoods, I mean. And yeah, they are doing a great amount of damage. He also purchased the Ice Shots, by the way. 15 power points collected now. He might go for the Eagles, and that's gonna be the case. And with the Eagles, he might even try to commit on the... on the. Never mind, he's gonna use them to kill the uh, Trollstone Throwers first. They are on the Frozen Land, so they have leadership, but... You know, they are very squishy in general, and the plan is just to knock them down. During this time, they are not able to attack the Eagles. The Eagles were able to take down the most annoying units from the Engma player, Sauron. And the ends are coming now, the siege will begin, and Engma doesn't have much on the field anymore. He's gonna lose the siege works. The tower here won't be effective because the ants are gonna be able to take him down in a second. The dildum is gonna die right after. He has leadership also now on Hadir, who is almost level 7 by the way. Level 8 would be unlocking the um, golden arrow, which is very effective against Engmar. Engmar is a faction which doesn't have fear resistant. The mills are getting taken down. He was, easy, he was even using the snowbind on the siege works. Which means it can't be used on the fortress anymore. The fortress is being the target. This eagle should be taken down quite fast. But he's gonna be able to attack one more time. They have two ends on the field. And the units here are not gonna be able to take down those ends quite fast. And during this time Mirkwoods are gonna be able to take the fight. And take down those rangers in a second and a half. Rallying call is gonna be used. Sauron is gonna call it GGGG is incoming. And the score after the game number 3 will be 3-0 for the Turkish player Avi Havi. He's only one win away from having a perfect score and reaching the finals in the winner bracket. The game number 4 in the best of 7 semi-finals. This time between Isengarden's elves on the map. Holin, Molin, Edit boys. And Avi Havi having an incredible performance so far. He's only one win away from entering the finals of the winner bracket. And if he, do, if he does that, he will be facing against Mr. Smok. In the best of nine, by the way. On the left side, we have the red elven player Avi Havi against the blue Isengard player Sauron from Canada. Slim Sheedy, welcome. Gamma, welcome. Alright, so we see two furnaces coming up for Isengard. On the other side... Early barracks once again from Ave Havi after one Malone 3 only. So he might go for the creep, but he might also go for the early rush. And we have seen this we have seen this strategy already from Imperialis against Isengard, against uh, when he was playing the quarterfinals against DG Premier. And this was super effective, by the way. The first time when he was going for the early barracks against Isengard, I think it was the same map. No, it was not this map, it was Ethan Mars. He was spamming a lot of Lorien warriors early on. Eisen abuser, elf lamer, <laughs> uh, and the game was pretty much over in three minutes. And we're gonna have Pikeman start indeed uh, this time. I mean, he's not gonna go for the Lorian warriors. He's not gonna go for the early attack. We wanna go for the creep first. On the other side, we see three furnaces into the Uruk pit from Isengard player Sauron, who is also gonna get Pikeman on the field first. All right, so let's see what those Pikeman are gonna do first. Oh, what is happening here? He was trying to lure the works away, I'm assuming. Nope, that's not being the case. And they are actually moving to the troll layer at the bottom left side. Um, Isengard might do the exact same thing, but at the top right side. He already set the waypoint here, as you can see. The pikemen are gonna go straight to this um, waypoint the second they are joining the battlefield. And the work pit is coming up at the same time for the Isengard player Sauron. Oh, he was able to see that. Uh, by the way, that what he's planning to do with the Builder. So a hero move, it would be indeed. <laughs> uh, Ave Havi isn't happy about that. It would be a hero move indeed if he can kinda steal the money potentially. Let's see if this is going to be the case. But he's actually slowing him down. And even though Elvin player went for the early barracks, Isengard will be the first one, I'm assuming, who will be creeping that first. Because he's also creeping without the help of the Builder. 
It's gonna take some more damage. But the creep will be uncontested anyway. Now Elven player was finally able to take down the troll. The builder has to be careful. I don't know about that. Sauron is playing with fire. Running for his life. With his uh, little wagon behind him. The creep will be secured by the Elven player Ave Ave and the builder from Sauron should be running into the archers. Yes, he does. Oh no. Hello, darkness, my old friend. The builder is being taken down. Look at, uh, on the bright side, he was able to creep the troll layer at the top right side. He is not gonna go for the inn. I don't know why, because I feel like inn is very great for the Isengard faction. Because of the black orcs, you are able to recruit. Um, we have Urukai also on the fields now. They are gonna go for the second creep potentially here at the top left side. And we have work pack. So if he can group all of them together and go for a massive war chant play, I think he might be able to deal some decent damage. But that's gonna be also the case. At the bottom side, we have Lorien warriors and pikemen moving for an attack as well. And the crossbowman is just um, crossbowman is just joining the battlefield from the Uruk pit. So I don't know about one crossbowman only. I don't think it's gonna be enough. The work packs, they can't approach those pikemen. And rallying call is gonna be used offensively. They're gonna be taken on in a second, as you can see. Uh, the crossbowmen are gonna be able to deal some damage, but they need to be very careful. Ave Ave is positioning very nicely with those Lorien warriors. The pikemen, they need to... I mean, the archers, they need to avoid fighting against the pikemen in melee fight. But we're gonna have also a great situation for Sauron this time. He should be able to deal with those archers, no big deal. Those archers here are also not protected at all, making sure to kill the work packs first. The Malone tree here will be definitely taken down, but um, the furnace has been destroyed. This one might go down as well. They are still buffed, by the way. Those Lorien warriors, they are gonna try to make it to the furnace here in between of the two production buildings. The furnace has been taken down indeed. Uh, uh, you know, Sauron has to make sure now to at least take down one more Malone tree. I think that's the least what he needs to do. Also, Ave Havi didn't purchase this in at the bottom left side. So no peasants from elves and no black orcs from Isengard. Nice body block, by the way, with the pikes and the porcupine formation. He knows he needs to just buy time for the elven archers to finish those Urukai off. They are level 2 now, but they are not even trying to make it out. Luckily, he was able to protect this furnace here. But Isengard now has only 400 command points available. I mean, 400 is not even that bad. He was also able to see the, to save the work packs level 2. He's building already the first lumber mill at the top side, top right side. 5 power points collected, 510 command points available for the album player after rallying cold, which is on cooldown. And Isengard will have also 5 power points very soon, but he's behind in terms of resource income. Lumber mills are great for Isengard, but I feel like the only point where they really pay off is the point when you have unlock the field of fires from the spellbook until this until this moment they are not gonna be very effective and you will need multiple of these lumber mills actually to make it work for you you will need like six seven eight nine ten potentially and you want to make sure that you have always enough trees around so they don't need to walk like uh, from here to here to actually work you know what i'm saying okay uh Kribian is ready for the next fight for the debuff Foresight is gonna be picked from Ave Ave after the rallying call. Uh, the transition into the stable not being made just yet. Uh, but now, nah, never mind, it's coming up now after two barracks. Alvin archers here, they are getting debuffed. Urukai in melee range, they should be easily able to take down those archers, no big deal. They are trying to disengage, but that's not gonna be possible. I think Urukai are faster uh, a little bit, so they should be able to chase them down. Also, this battalion here has to make sure to run away. They are also level 2. But the Urukai are badly damaged now as they are trying to disengage. And actually, not a bad thing. Ave Ave lost only one archer, but he was beating the Kribane, um, which is gonna be on cooldown now for the next fight. Warchan is available. Yes. 1200. I think he's going for Sharku. Yeah, Sharku is incoming, boys. We have seen Sharku so many times today. When Mr. Smog was playing Isengard against the Alvin faction from Imperialist. We know how... He, uh, I don't know, man. I, like, he's hitting like a truck, guys, right? We shall see how effective he's gonna be now in the hands of Sauron. Mr. Smog made him work big time in the Best of 7 series earlier today.
Okay, so four power points almost collected. I think Devastation or Waldman of Dunland. Uh, Mr. Smog was always going for Waldman of Dunland today. Uh, Besides the one time, I feel like Waldman of Dunland, especially when the enemy has cavalry on the field, is not worth it because the second you use them on the Elven Arches, you're gonna get, you know, they're gonna get trampled down and you're gonna lose them in a second. I feel like Devastation is the more reliable power point ability. And Wildman, I think it's only worth it if the Elven player doesn't have Calf on the field. But that's only my personal opinion. Especially in this current situation where Isengard is kinda behind. He will need the resource income from the Devastation, which might be used to get Lords on the field. Which might be used to make more units during this time. But yeah, let's see. 535 command points, 5 power points collected. Sharku is here now. We know Sharku is gonna be very effective against clumped units. So Ave Havi, if he doesn't want to run into the same troubles like Imperialist did today, has to make sure to keep spamming more and more pikemen all the time. Because the archers from Elven Faction are not going to be able to damage Sharku too much. But the pikemen on the other side, they are bursting him down very quickly as you can see. And Sharku is forced to retreat. The tower is going to make it up. And on the bright side here for Isengard, man, he has like not enough pikemen around. I feel like... This tower might do some great work, but the towers are getting nerfed big time during the patch. So you can see, even a couple of units like this, they are bursting down these towers very, very quickly. That's incredible. Sharku is level 2. 8 power points collected from Elven player. The Malon tree here should be protected by those archers, but Sharku is going to be able to take them down. You want to make sure to not give him too many levels, because he's going to get tankier, tankier, tankier. He has now 3,300 health already. He starts, by the way, by the way with 3,000 HP, with level 1, which is a lot for a, for a hero, uh, for, you know, with that price, only 1,200, by the way. And once he's level 7, he's gonna be very, very hard to take down, because he will have double armor, 100% armor. Just think about Glorfindel, how tanky he is, or he was, with the Blade of Purity. Two Malon trees are taken down. Elven army is being used around this side. We have both players using the buff, but also the debuff is incoming from the Isengard player now. Heal will be used immediately. Urukai and Pikemen, they can't make it to the backline. But once they are able to take down the Lorien Warriors and Pikemen, Sharku can always come back and take down the Arches, no big deal. The Vestation will be indeed picked from Isengard player this time. He's gonna use it. I like the Vestation a lot against Elves because it's a win-win situation. You're gonna get money, you are getting rid of the trees which are granting invisibility for the Alvin units. So it's like a win-win win win thing, you know? I like it a lot. Charco is coming now. He's level almost 5 already. We have 450 command points only for Isengard. That means the Vestation was pretty much needed. <laughs> he's pinging... <laughs> he's pinging... Oh! He was pinging him as he was fighting against Pikemen. <laughs> he was able to get away barely. He's gonna regenerate over time. On the other side, we have 6 10 command points for the Alvin player, Ave Havi. We have also Haldir on the field. I think Haldir is a great and reliable hero in all the situations. I feel like there is not a single situation where Haldir is a bad choice. Pretty basic hero, very useful in any stage of the game. Has a great scaling into the lead game as well with the Golden Arrow. Not, not like Faramir, for example, who doesn't scale. You know, in which doesn't care, you don't care if he levels up to level 8 or 10, because you don't get anything from that beside the, you know, beside the base uh, base stats. But Haldir is not like that. Haldir has Golden Arrow, which can actually influence those fights big time. The work packs they are getting kind of catched by those Revander Lancers. Uh, if this happens to you, I feel like in this situation, just turn and fight. Because if running away is not an option, you might also just turn and fight to take down at least some of those units. We have Ballista Expansions, Towers, Lourdes is on the field now, he's gonna hit level 2 very soon. We need to keep an eye on Sharku, he's the only hope for the Isengard player in this situation. 400 command points only against 635. He has collected 10 power points already after heal, rallying call and foresight. We have Devastation, Warchan and Kreebane in 4 power points collected afterwards. He's gonna recruit, I mean, he's gonna perch, uh, capture this in now at the top right side. Ave Have is pinging uh, his pikemen, I'm assuming, or his lancers. I don't know what's happening. 
Charco has to be careful against the pikeman, but he can always chase down those lancers all the time. Isengard has also this in at the bottom left side under his control, but that's not the problem. The problem is his command points kept because he keeps losing those furnaces all the time. So yes, he has buffed the ints under his control, but the units are not able to enter the battlefield just yet. And also his resource income is not looking that great right now. As you can see, he has you know, units in the queue. The Vork Riders, the Black Oryx here from the top right side. They are not make it. They are not able to make it to the battlefield just yet. Mist is gonna be ready for the next fight. Black Oryx are getting trampled down by those Lancers. Uh, I feel like he will definitely need industry as well. He will need industry, he will need to expand, he will need to be able to spam many many units. Has to keep his command points as high as possible. Warchan is gonna be used offensively. Lourdes is also inside the army by the way, Kribin is gonna use. It looks like he wanna fully commit to that fight. Sharku needs to be here, right there. Imagine Sharku here. Hitting one time the Elven Warrior, Elven Archer in the middle of the battalion. <laughs> he would be able to kill so much. And uh, Lourdes is also doing a great job, by the way. The, oh, the Archers are not protected at all. Where is Sharku when we need them? Oh, I didn't pay attention. And Sharku will be taking down the Mirkwoods. Are not normal Archers, ladies and gentlemen. And they are dealing incredible amount of damage. But I think he was also fighting against Pikemen or something. And I feel like Sharku needed to be here around this side. Lourdes is running for his life, he's almost level 4, which would unlock the cripple ability. During all this time, Elven player was also losing a couple of these Lancers. Sharku has to get revived very soon, 9 power points almost collected after the Vestation, Warchan and Kribane. The tower here will be taken down definitely. Again, the towers are much much easier to take down now. Oh nice bait by the way, the Lancers, they are still chasing down Lourdes, they might be able to finish him off by the way. Run now? Can you run? You can't run from this at this point. Lourdes also has been taken down. Sauron is not happy about that. You went through a full unit of spear. And yeah, that's actually the, the case a couple of times. That's what I was wondering as well during the last matches. In the last couple of days we had. Um, sometimes you're running through the pikemen. And then you don't die. You actually end up dealing damage to the pikemen as you trample them to the ground. <laughs> but you don't receive any damage, sometimes they touch you and you are dead. It's kind of random and I think it's like also like, like a little bit luck based or something, I don't know. The furnace here is gonna be taken down. 500 command points for Isengard only against 770, but he also lost both his heroes, which is always a bad sign. And Isengard's economy not looking that great. He might go for the Wildman of Zunland, but I feel like Wildman, I don't know if this is gonna be very effective. The only good thing about the, about the Wildman is that you can use that on top of the enemy units. But again, when there are Lancers around, I feel like it's not gonna be very effective. And I can't believe it, boys. Like, two semifinals in one day, and two of them are being kinda one-sided. I mean, one-sided might sound wrong, but I mean at least one-sided in terms of score. Because, to be honest with you, I was expecting this series going up to the game number seven. And also this game for Ave Have looks very great. And we might see another semi-finals with 4-0. And then we have this dominant players, Ave Havi, but also Mr. Smoke in the finals, in the best of nine, facing against each other. That would be awesome. Let's see. I mean, I will still hope that Sauron can kinda come back from this situation, but it's gonna be very difficult. The vestation is ready, can be used. Should be used immediately. Will be used now. Gives him a lot of money as you can see. I think he needs to revive his Sharku and Lourdes because Lourdes was almost level 5. I think Lourdes is gonna be necessary. Going for the Siege Works next. Sharku is back in the business. 12 power points collected now after Devastation. Has still a lot, uh, a lot of money but he can't use the money right now. He's almost command points kept all the time. Sharku is trampling down those archers. Level 5 now. Um, they are getting invisible obviously around the trees. Charku keeps chasing down those Lancers all the time. We have some small fights during this time at the bottom left side. Which should be won by the Elven player. Charku was trying to make it here. Oh, they don't have any pikemen around, right? They don't. And it's party time, show time. Can you do it? I think Charku needs to take the risk. In this situation, when you are de dead behind, I think you have to take the risk. Like, you have to risk the biscuit. 
in order to achieve something. There is no reason of you playing, playing very carefully if you are so much behind like Sauron is in the game number 4 in the best of 7. This might be the final game. If Sauron loses that, the series is over and he's gonna drop down to the loser bracket. He has now fueled the fires by the way from the spellbook. <clears throat> Elven player on the other side has almost 12 power points collected. Lourdes is almost level 5 which will unlock the leadership but once again he's kinda off guard. No reinforcements. Running for his life, level 5 unlocked for the leadership, which gonna get negated from the mist. We have also the hero himself, Treebeard, the favorite hero from Truckee, is joining the battlefield. It's birthday time, right? Yeah, it's birthday. It's already 12. Thank you, guys. I'm 30 now, by the way. <laughs> oh, I feel old, man. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for your wishes. Appreciate that. We bring spears from Midland. Uh, for my birthday, I wish that this game doesn't, you know, end here and Sauron can magically come back. Let's see if my birthday wishes are gonna become true. Okay, so 13 power points collected, 8, 5, uh, 855 command points available for elves and 475 only for Isengard. The siege has begun, the fortress is being under attack. Hadarak too, thank you so much for the follow. Gangeta, thank you soon. Thank you guys so much. Happy birthday, thank you Balindru. Smokey, look, thank you, my friend. Smokey already gave me the birthday present today, showing his dominance. And yeah, I mean, it was a great game, great performance. But luckily, and I think that's really good that we are running a double elimination tournament, that if something goes wrong, and, you know, I feel like this series can go either way. Also, Sauron could have won this 4 0. Also, Impi could have won this 4 0. Thank you so much for the Prime! Primer! Appreciate that. Just Welcome. Welcome to the Unstanded Screw. Privateer. Thank you so much. The fortress is gonna be taken down, boys. Everything is falling apart. The fortress is gone. Game is gonna be over, and we're gonna have two times in one day, in two semi-finals, a 4-0 score. Earlier today for Mr. Smock against Imperialist. And now, it's gonna be between Sauron and Ave Havi, in which Ave Havi wins against the best battle for Middle Earth 2 player, one of his friends, 4 0 as well. What a great and incredible performance! And that means in the finals of the winner bracket, we will have Mr. Smock against Ave Havi in the best of 9 in the following days, boys. Go final today? <laughs> I don't think so, man. I, especially Avi Havi, he already played now like, four games, and you can't expect him to play like four, like up to nine more games, which might be possible, by the way. But yeah, it was very fun. Even though the games were, you know, the series is 4 0, I think the games were still nice. Uh, great performance from Avi Havi. And I think the final smock against Avi Havi, oof, that's gonna be great, guys. Make sure to not miss them, by the way. Oh.